In a previous video, I made a Raspberry Pi based temperature monitor system for my server room. I received a request to make a tutorial demonstrating how to monitor humidity too. Therefore, this will be a quick video showing how to use a combined temperature humidity sensor. This is the DHT22 sensor that does both temperature and humidity. It's very inexpensive, it can run on 3.3 volts, so it's easy to integrate with the Pi, and it only needs one GPIO pin for communication. On my workbench, I have the DHT22 plugged into the first four slots of my breadboard. To hook it up, pin 1 goes to the Pi's 3.3 volt pin. Pin 2 goes to GPIO 4. Pin 3 is not connected to anything, and pin 4 goes to ground. Also, make sure you place a 10K ohm resistor between the data line and the 3.3 volt. First I'll hook up pin 4 of the DHT22 to the ground rail of my breadboard, which is common to my Pi. You could also hook it up directly to any of the ground pins on the Pi. Next I'll hook up pin 2 of the DHT22 to GPIO 4 on the Pi. This is the data line, which the Pi uses to pull the sensor. Next I'll hook up pin 1 of the DHT22 to the Pi's 3.3 volt pin. However, before I plug it into the Pi, I'll add a 10K ohm resistor between the pins 1 and 2, the 3.3 volt and the data line. Probably you should be doing this with the Pi turned off, but I'm lazy. If you're not careful, you could damage the sensor or the Pi. Alright, that's all it takes in terms of hardware. As of this video, I found two Python libraries available to control the DHT22. One is made by Adafruit, which is an excellent online source for Pi components. The second is provided by the Pi GPIO library. We'll start with the Adafruit library. I'll open up a terminal and make sure I'm in my home directory. Then I'll use git clone to download the Adafruit software. Now I'll switch to the folder I just downloaded. Before installing any software, it's a good idea to always run a sudo apt get update. There are two dependent modules that must be installed, build essential and python dev. Once that's done, I'll use python setup to install the Adafruit software. Let's clear the screen and make sure we're in the home directory. Now I'm going to run idle. I use gksu because the Adafruit library requires root privileges to access the GPIO pins. I consider this a drawback for this library, at least in terms of security. Okay, idle's up, and I'll import the Adafruit DHT library using DHT for short. Now I just use the read retry method to pull the DHT22 sensor on GPIO4. Printing shows that the temperature is 25.3 degrees Celsius, and the humidity is 42.2%. Pretty easy, and just three lines of code. Now we'll take a look at the Pi GPIO library, which has some advantages over the Adafruit, and can do much more than just read the DHT22. I'll open up a terminal and make sure I'm in the root directory. I'll use wget to download the Pi GPIO library in zip format. When that's done, I'll unzip it. I'll change to the folder I just unzipped and run make to compile the software. This can take a long time, so I'll speed up the video. Then I'll use make install to install the components we just compiled. Okay, Pi GPIO is now installed. Now I'll go to the Pi GPIO website. I'll click on Examples, click on Python Code, I'll find the DHT22 module and click Code to download it. Here's the contents of the zip file. We don't need the old version, so I'll only extract DHT22Pi. I'll go to my home directory and create a new folder. I'll call it Pi GPIO underscore DHT22. I'll extract the selected module there. You could do this in terminal too, but this is an alternative that some people might find easier. Everything looks good. My home directory now contains the pi gpio underscore DHT22 folder, and it contains the DHT22 module to control the sensor via pi gpio. Before we run any Python code, we need to open up a terminal and use sudo pi gpio d to start the pi gpio daemon. 
One advantage of this library is once the service is running, we don't need root privileges to access the GPIO from Python. Now I'll open up idle as a regular user and import OS. Change directory to the PI GPIO DHT22 folder so the new module will be in the right path. I'll import PI GPIO and instantiate a PI. I'll import the DHT22 module. I'll instantiate the sensor connected to GPIO4. Now all we have to do to pull the DHT22 is called the trigger method. Print S humidity shows 42.8%. Print S temperature shows 25.2 degrees Celsius. Another cool feature of this library is it also has built-in support for a status LED. We just need to connect the anode of the LED to a GPIO pin. I'll use 17 and then connect the cathode to ground in series with a 100 ohm resistor. I'll add an LED to the breadboard. I'll connect the cathode terminal of the LED to ground using a 100 ohm resistor. I'm using the ground rail, but you could also use any of the ground pins on the Pi. Then I just connect the anode terminal of the LED to GPIO 17 on the Pi. Again, it's a better practice to do all this with the Pi powered off. I canceled the previous sensor and I'll re-instantiate it, but this time I'll include an LED parameter of 17. Now if you watch the LED carefully, you can see it blink every time I call the trigger method. When you're done, you need to call the cancel method on the sensor and also the stop method for Pi. I hope you found this video useful. I have more projects on my website, rototron.info. Also, feel free to make requests. If I have the parts and the time, I'll do it. Thanks for watching.